Steve Mignani here doing the Junkyard Crawl at Burnison Auto Wrecking in Burnison, Mass. Now, everybody loves a Dodge Dart. It was one of the most reliable, economical, cheap cars of the 1960s. we got to remember, this is not a Dodge Dart. This is Plymouth's version of the Dart, the Valiant, which arrived in 1960. Now, this is a second generation. This is a 1964. This body style ran from 63 through 66 with largely unchanged looks. Now, keep in mind, 66 was the final year that you get a station wagon in the Dart or Valiant lineup. So here is kind of the, the end of that type of thing. Now this is a 64. We know that because it has push button controls on the automatic transmission. And we'll see the left hand side of the steering wheel, those uh, five buttons are for the three speed a904 aluminum torque flight transmission. A standard transmission would have been a three speed on the column. There was actually a four speed floor shift tranny available, uh, but this again is the push button torque flight, which is what most of these were. Now keep in mind, in 1964, 228,000 Valiants were built, of which about one in 10 was a wagon like this. Now the wagon came in two families, the V100 and the V200. It's basically trim differences. When you see the chrome trim here along the belt, that's a V200, a little spiffier. These also had the chrome drip rail molding versus body colored stuff on the V100 wagon. Uh, and of course, this thing right here, kind of a rare piece, uh, kind of a, a mixed bag. This is also part of the V200 trim package. You can see where Bondo has been installed Installed, and to reinstall this, they used Phillips head screws that were just cranked in there. That's not Chrysler, but when this thing got the Bondo body repair, this was reinstalled. But again, that's V200 stuff right there. And speaking of Bondo, one of the things that's just classic about Rust Belt cars, this is a part of the rear quarter panel, or is it? Well, no. <laughs> this is actually a buildup of plastic body filler that was used to restore the appearance of this car. But that's the thing. These cars, like Chevy Novas and Ford Falcons, were classic rust bombs here in New England or anywhere the roads are salted. Uh, but something on the back of this one is kind of cool. This is a 64. Now, 63 again was the first year for this second gen Valiant. Well, here we see this sort of block off plate down below the taillight. We see it on both sides. Let's go to this side. It's not smashed up. But this here shows us where 1963 only the taillight was horizontal down here and this block off plate allowed Chrysler to use the same quarter panel for 64 up and install vertical taillights. So this is kind of how the, the uh, body designers gave the, the Valiant a uh, tail lift or a facelift, if you will, from 63 to 64, but they can't fool us. Again, these are band-aids used by the cost cutters to allow one part do many, many jobs. Now this one does have a roof rack, but this is not the original factory piece. We know that because it just doesn't have the same lines. This is an add-on piece, probably generic. Again, $48 was the price for the optional roof rack on your Valiant wagon. Uh, this has been added, not the original piece, but kind of a classy item. Now here's the, the interior bench seat on this one, and we see here on the dash, uh, V200 right there. Again, tells us this is the, uh, the upscale wagon. Now, there was also a thing called the Valiant Signet, which was the top level Valiant, but those were never available as either four doors or wagons. The Signets were strictly two door or convertible cars. Now this one here, I can tell you it's a six cylinder car without even opening hood. Why? Well, drum brakes up front, no discs until 1965 on Barracudas and Formula S's. These are the nine inch drums that you'd find on six cylinder cars. The optional 273 V8, which was $131 extra, we'd have a 10 inch drum right here. So again, it's gonna be a six cylinder. Now, the big question is which one? If you wanna go around me that way, we'll pop the hood and explore which engine is present. Okay, it's open that hood. Get ready for a nice sound of the uh, carthritis. Ooh, gotta love that. Okay, slant six. Here it is. Now, these of course are called the slant six because the engine lays over on a 30 degree angle toward the passenger side of the car. The point of that was to get the engine's height lower, which allowed the body stylist to have a lower cowl height. And of course, that meant a lower side profile to the car. Cooler, sleeker looking thing. And also, with the slanted engine uh, design, it also allowed for a longer, more streamlined intake manifold. If this was an upright engine, there'd be less room over there to do a streamlined manifold. Now this is Ram Tunes, this intake manifold, and here is 
a look at it. Now, one barrel carburetor, no two barrels in America. Uh, Australia, yes, and in the late 70s, yes, two barrel slant sixes, but there were strictly one barrels here in the States. Now, this is a 225. We know that because we look at this transfer hose right here, this little guy right here. It's about an inch long, inch and a half. That means this is the tall deck 225, and that was an extra $45, or, or yeah, $47 actually. The 170 slant six, which looks about the same, but as a shorter deck height, this little rubber hose here is virtually non-existent. It's very short. So this is the 225, which was seen in most of these. And again, the 170 slant six made pretty good power, 101 horse, the 225, 145 horsepower. And one thing I love about these things is the air cleaner lid, this thing right here, was also used on 413 four barrels, 383 four barrels, even the 273 four barrel commando engine used that same air cleaner lid in chrome. But these things are kind of cool. The only downside is the base plate is sized for a one barrel. So some folks will cut this out and modify it to be used with a four barrel, but that lid is the same on 413, like a Chrysler 300L, same air cleaner lid as on a slant six. So let's keep our keep looking around the side here. Again, the rust, the tin worm has totally made a mess out of this car. But again, these are the 13 inch wheels seen on uh, virtually all Valiants. There was a 14 inch rim option, but one thing about the, the Mopar small bolt wheels, and they call it small bolt because this is a five on four inch bolt pattern, not the five on four and a half inch bolt pattern seen on the B bodies and the C bodies. So that's the story of this 1964 uh, Plymouth Valiant V200 station wagon. And again, of the roughly 280,000 Valiants built in 1964, one in 10 was a wagon like this. So if you grew up in the 60s, your family might have had one of these. But remember, the Valiant is not a dart. This is a Plymouth, the darts a Dodge. Now you know. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mags YouTube channel, and there's plenty more from Burnison Auto Wrecking and Burnison Bass.